What's up everybody, it's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Cubex Portable Base. And this is a viewer build that got sent to me over on my Discord server. And so I was really interested to check it out. And uh, as the name implies, it's essentially a portable base. And it's actually kind of interesting the way it's set up. Um, it even has wheels and things for uh, driving around on ice lakes and stuff because it has a lot of hydrogen thrusters for a base, so obviously ice is kind of necessary to power it. And you can see we've got some drills here for, you know, well, <laughs> obvious reasons for getting the ice that powers the thrusters, etc. and so on. Um, I do kind of like that there's... Um, I believe these are referred to in the description as hydrogen thruster shields, or thruster shields. Um, I thought that was kind of a cool idea that I don't think very many people actually do. Some of them are recessed in sometimes, but I thought that was kind of neat. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I, I really do kind of like the simplicity of the design. It's kind of one of those, I, something that I could see myself building. It's one of these, it's like... You know, you see some of these really ridiculously detailed and crazy builds, and it's like, man. Now, one thing I should point out about this build is from at least what I can glean from the description, um, it is a survival based in terms of it was designed in survival by the player. Um, and so I do feel like that's a, a factor that people need to consider as well. Uh, because building in survival is actually very different than building in creative when you just have free reign and you don't have to weld everything and so on and so forth. So um, the windmill things here are obviously for power and whatnot, but I do want to point out that in the description it does mention you have to be locked in a static grid using the landing gears and stuff. Um, and there is a couple of things. I can't remember what the other one is. There's something else that you have to have it converted to a station for um, for when you're actually, um, doing, I, I forget what other functionality it was, but there was something else that you needed to be converted into a station for to do. Um, I also, oh, and I, I, I will say I do like the rooftop lounge thing. This is pretty cool. And obviously it's supposed to be for atmospheres, but I think this is kind of neat of an idea for, like, space. If you were out in space and everybody had, like, their mag boots on or you have your artificial gravity or whatnot, how cool would that be to just be, like, out in space, nothing between you, and you're just like, yeah, just chilling, having a drink? That would be a really cool idea to me. Scary, but in the concept of you're safe doing it, it'd be cool. Um, I also can appreciate that, uh, I mean... I'm not going to say that uh, when when the builder posted this in the workshop they had me in mind, but I do find it a little coincidental it's one of the first that actually had an entrance description in in the description of, of where to actually <laughs> where to actually enter the ship from. And I probably still didn't even do it right if I'm honest, but we're going to roll with it. Um, Alright, so this is kind of the... I think this is the bridge? Maybe? Uh, let's see, we've got... Man, that's really bright for some reason. You know what? I think there's a... Okay, I think I know what happened here. Um, actually, give me a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I realized that there was a mod in place on the world for um, another build that I was going to feature next, or at least in this episode. Um, so it was messing with the text readability. So I went and made basically a vanilla version of the world and cleared out the mods. So, um, yeah. So now we can actually read this. So, crisis averted. Um, so we have landing gear, switch lock, wheels, thruster, thruster shields, open and close, all thrusters on, all thrusters off, lift thrusters, increase, decrease, override, uh, front gate, all thrusters not including up. Okay. So that tells me that this is essentially the the flight seat of the, of the ship. Now, I don't think it's really, it, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone anyway, that it kind of moves pretty slow in terms of the turning. Um, acceleration? Actually not that bad, but I mean, you've got some ginormous thrusters. But turning-wise, it turns like you're flying a base, kind of thing. 
So bear that in mind. But um, I didn't. I didn't do think it's kind of cool the idea of being able to actually just move your base around rather than having like a ship or something. That is kind of a neat idea. Um, but it kind of comes at a, at a price. Um, so yeah, we've got some different summary things here and whatnot. We kind of went a little bit backwards there and already tested the maneuverability, but oh well. What are you going to do? Um, ooh, I like this. I like this lighting in here. Now, some people, I'm gonna, not going to name names because it was basically everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, some people mentioned in the last, or the second to last episode, I believe, um, that I may or may not have missed a dance floor on one of the other builds that I featured. In my defense, I didn't know it was there. Um, and I, it wasn't in the description or anything. But this one, I do know is there, because I was told about it on Discord. Um, <laughs> so, let's see, we've got front gate. Not sure... Okay, so that's that front ramp in the nose area of the um, of the ship that we saw. Where I, I recognize the blast door blocks. I don't think I mentioned it, but for most of you, it was probably pretty obvious that that was going to be a ramp. Now, I like how there's different parties. That's pretty funny. So if we do party one... Is that just to turn off the lights? Party two... And then three spins it? Yeah. All right. So we got our disco ball going. There. Are we happy now? I did not ignore the dance floor. <laughs> and there's probably more than one, but this has actually been a, uh, a conversation that I've been having with the builder on my Discord server where it was like, ship's pretty much ready, but I haven't got the disco ball done yet. So I wanted to make sure that I actually pointed that out. Uh, we'll go down that way in a second and check out the dance floor. For now, let's see what goes this away. So this is back in the engineering drill area. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, the description mentions that it's got at least, I believe, two or four refineries and like four assemblers, all with you know um, specialty module things and whatnot. Um, we've got a one, two, three, four. Four. I can count, okay. Uh, four piston length drill, which is always useful. I do like when um, the, the use of texturing and stuff, where you've got one set that's clean and then one color that's like a rusty. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and there's also an entrance here to the exterior of the ship. Can never have enough entrances. I mean, well, if you want me to showcase a build, you can't have enough entrances. If you want your ship to be secure, you probably should have one. <laughs> I mean, just saying. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the overall design. Again, I can, I can definitely see how this could be from a survival standpoint, because there's things that I do myself uh, when playing in survival that I could see, you know, kind of like, well, I need this here. Oh, well, I need that here. And then you kind of end up kind of doing whatever you have to do to get it to, to work. But then you're also trying to keep some kind of form and function hybrid going on. Creative builds are fun because, you know, they can just kind of be whatever you want them to be. But, um, oh, and this is the other side. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay. Is there anything over here? No, so this is all just kind of a maintenance access point. So, but that's cool. I, I really have gotten to where I like the idea of um, hiding form in your engineering rooms. And what I mean by that is making it look as though it's all cluttered and everything's just kind of placed all over with, with no real look in mind, but then in reality, you actually did have kind of a, a look design in mind. It also has a safe zone, obviously, um, for when you have... I think this was another one of the features that you had to be static. You had to have, like, shifted it to a, uh, a station instead of a, a ship for that to work. I think that might have been what it was. I knew there was something else. It's in the description, but I think that's what it was. Um, this is kind of an interesting thing, too, this little... I don't know what you'd even call this. I guess kind of a housing 
type thing where you've got your programmable blocks, your timer blocks, all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of the casing for the, the vertical thrusters. That's kind of cool. I like that. It's another one of those things that I don't think really does anything, but wait, what? What is that? What is, what is that doing? That's weird. I wonder if that's supposed to be there or not. Um, speaking of supposed to be there or not, I do f feel like I remember in the description there was a mention... Oh no, actually it's not in the description, it was on my Discord server when I was talking with the builder, that the um, it's, it's not completely finished 100%, um, but it was kind of at that good enough that um, everyone could look at it kind of, kind of thing, so... Um, there could very well be a, a future version with further features and polish and whatnot, but um, I do like the... This is kind of crazy if you think about it, though. I mean, it looks like, okay, cool, you know, Disco Ball, but there's a lot of hinges and stuff going on here. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's just basically a plus of blocks and then you know, a hinge on each open face of the block, and then a, a spotlight. And that sounds really simple, but to adjust the angle and lights for each one and everything, it's like, that's actually a little bit crazy. That probably took a minute. Uh, but anyways, that's going to do it for this one, so let's move on to the next one. All right, and next up we have the Altera Aurora. A lot of this... Uh, uh, this, this one should be pretty familiar to a lot of you. Um, but... Obviously, as the name implies, this is based on the Aurora from Subnautica. Now, for some reason, I have yet to been able to figure out why. I thought at first it was because it needed to load in or something, but I'm getting this weird micro stutter with this build, and I don't know why, because it's not really that crazy of a build, but as you can see, it's like every second or so, it like shudders. And I'm not really sure what to make of that, because it doesn't use a lot of mods. Actually, it's not using any mods, it's just using the DLC. It wasn't doing this on the other build that I did. So I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, and it's kind of annoying, because... Um, I don't really think it should be there, to be honest. I even thought maybe it was like something running in the background on my computer, so I was like closing a bunch of stuff. Um, but it's, it's just seemingly with this build for some reason and I'm wondering if there's a script or a timer block or something that is like there's a bunch of them updating all at one time is what I'm wondering uh, because it does seem to be pretty darn consistent with like every second now the other thing is I don't know um, exactly how the interior is looking uh, because it mentioned the interior, but it didn't really say what it... Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. It's really aggravating. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. That's, re that's really annoying. Um, but I don't know how, to what degree the interior is finished. Um, because it wasn't brought up really in the description other than to say it existed. Like, we, we've got an interior kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of thrusters, which could be part of what's going on, I suppose. But the fact that it keeps a consistent timing makes me think that it's some kind of programmable block or script update. Or something that's running every, like, second or few ticks or something like that. Um, but it's kind of, kind of irritating, not gonna lie. Um, I don't think I could do... Like, uh, I don't think I could do this build in, like, a survival actual playthrough world if it kept doing that, because that would get old really quick. Um, as it already has. And it's kind of one of those, like, there's a part of me that doesn't want to keep, keep using that because of that, but it is a cool build that I wanted to show off. And actually, I was a bit curious about how accurate they went with the interior um, since obviously since you can play the game you can tell what's supposed to like this is actually a little different if I remember correctly most of them they were bunks but they had lockers and other things um, so I'm not really sure exactly why they didn't do it that way but um, 
It's an interesting idea, though. It's just one of those. I've done so much Subnautica on my channel that kind of a Subnautica Space Engineers hybrid. I just had to had to show it off. Um, passage back, passage to back of ship. Replenish oxygen. Okay. I'm assuming that means we just came from the back of the ship. Okay, this is promising. I think the um, I think the engine room would actually be probably the most accurate way to see if the uh, if the um, actual original design was kept in mind, which kind of sort of, but not really. I mean, these pillars kind of remind me of the the engine room, but there should be like you know a large reactor or something in the middle. Unless it's further back. No, not really. Interesting. So it's it seems like it's more of an exterior take. I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that. But it seems like it's more of an exterior take on the Aurora than a one-to-one. -one. Um, let me pop into spectator for a second here. Because the um the exterior is pretty spot on. From what I mean, from what we know about it, obviously, because when you actually get to really see it and stuff, <laughs> it kind of gets, spoiler alert, it kind of gets ripped in half. Um, but yeah, I really like the idea of it overall. I am a little disappointed at whatever is causing this micro stutter. That's really aggravating. But, um, and I don't think we ever got to see the bridge in, in Subnautica. I think that was one of those either off-limit areas um, I don't think it got destroyed, but I just don't think we had access to it. Um, and this looks like a bridge access from here. Okay, so that's like the main entrance area. So I would actually like to have walked through this a bit more thoroughly, but because that hitching thing going on, I think I'm actually going to cut it. Let me know if you guys um, actually look through this yourself, if it does that for you or not. I am very curious as to what the cause of that is, and whether or not it's something on my machine, or whether it's, um, whether it's something to do with this build. But, um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one, so let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, and last but not least, we have the MK8 version B. I think I got that right. Now, there's a couple of things I need to mention about this one. First of all, uh, it was a viewer submission, uh, or rather suggestion, but I don't think it was, I, I don't know that it was built by that person. I don't think it was. Um, the other thing is that it is considered, I believe, by the builder a work in progress, according to the description, because um, it mentions that it, some things were not finished and so on and whatnot. Um, the other is that there's a lot of mods on this one, so it might turn some people away, but it does look awesome. I mean, I gotta look into whatever this lighting mod is that it's it's using, because these lights along this are insane. They look so cool. Um, the other thing is that the, the workshop description actually recommends pasting it in as a station. I don't exactly know why, but I followed along, I think. I'm pretty sure I pasted it in as a station, I hope. Um, if not, we're gonna find out. But, uh, I don't really know exactly what the reasoning for that is. I don't know if there's enough moving parts that things may get broke, or if it's just that much more performance heavy for it to be a dynamic grid. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. Overall, that should cover kind of the basics of the things you need to know before dabbling type of thing. I don't know what this is. This looks... There's, there's a lot of color-coded things that I'm seeing, like... This has, you know, green, yellow, blue, and then red, and we've got almost a, a Simon Says color palette going on here. Is this all weapons? It's hard with mods, because I can't always tell what's what. Railgun! These are all weapons. Um... So yeah, if you're in front of this thing, you're gonna die. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, and then what is this? Laser capacitor. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. It could be because I've been 
watching Beast Wars recently, but uh, we're all gonna die. <laughs> That's crazy. Holy crap! Are these all capacitors? Ion beam combiner? Good lord. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of when somebody's played vanilla Minecraft for years and then watches a Feed the Beast video and somebody's got like a applied energistics network with like a mining laser and stuff and you're just kind of like, what is going on? It's like, look at all this crap. There's a million welders and stuff. What are all these for, I wonder? Can they reach these over here? What's this thing? Ion beam generator. Yeah, this reminds me of when, uh, when, uh, bass player KG and Adrian Wannafly and myself had the Feed the Beast server that we were doing videos on, and I was trying to build a nuclear reactor in Minecraft. <laughs> this is what this makes me think of. Holy crap, dude. There's so much... There's so many components going on here. I can't figure out if that's on purpose or not. I kind of feel like that might have been damage or something that got overlooked. Let's check the other side. See, the other side doesn't have it. So either that or because it's still a work in progress, maybe that's an access panel. And what are these? If these... Okay, so this is actually interesting. Are these actually a mod? No. Wait. Heavy armor... Okay, so it kind of is. It's using modded blocks. But that's not exactly a mod. Hydrogen engine. So, obviously, you would have to... Um, let's see, what is this? Is this the heavy armor ramp? But I, in terms of shape, I don't think that's necessarily something that would need to be modded. I think they just used a modded block for reasons. And the more I look at this, the more I'm kind of like, this has got to be one of the craziest looking cannons that actually you could probably build. Oh look, there's even a flight seat out here, or a control seat. Um, you could probably legitimately build this cannon turret thing in vanilla. I think. I could be wrong. I'm not the, I'm not an expert on, on these types of things, but I feel like you could actually build that. And that's gotta be one of the s coolest looking, like, most polished looking turrets I've ever seen. Um, I don't really know what the point of this is. I don't really care. There's lasers and spinny things, and this was kind of how this build was pitched to me, actually. It was like, I think you'll really like this. There's glowing lasers, there's spinny things, and there's glass. And I was kind of like, yeah, I think you're onto something. Um, one thing that I will say is this reminds me of a Mass Effect relay from the Mass Effect series. It's got that kind of like circular and then the, um, the longer edge out here. So it kind of it kind of makes me think of like a a flyable Mass Effect relay, which is really cool. Now in this really cool ship, I am left wondering if the entrance to said really cool ship is going to be equally obscured. I gotta figure out what this is though. I'm sorry for everyone's eyes. Glowing light round it. That is cool. It's a block that glows. That is something that um, Keen needs to just add, like like flat out. We just need blocks that can light up, like light blocks, right? You know, um, you could actually have it emit light type of thing, like a uh, instead of just an interior light or whatever. That would be really cool if they just had like a light block. Um, or a glowing block for differentiation's sake. But as for the door, <laughs> I know it's I know it's gotta have a door somewhere, right? And it's probably something I've passed already a bunch of times. If if, uh, if previous things hold, what is this? Wait a minute, what is this? Got a control thing. What are we? It's just a control panel. What do I do with that? Um. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I feel like I could get in somewhere through the through the uh, kind of just guts and stuff of the ship, but I, it's probably not the way I'm supposed to do it. Who are you? Ion capacitor. There's a lot to this ion mod, apparently, this ion cannon thing. There's got to be a lot to that, because I keep seeing, like, combiners, capacitors, beam 
relays or whatnot, whatever. I'm so lost in this ship. Um, I know I'm already... I, I know it's also because I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but that, I feel like, is semantics. Okay, so before anyone rags on me in the comments about, oh, this is what the welders are for, I figured it out, sort of. There's a projector here, there's a bunch of welders, so there's got to be like... this has got to be like a torpedo or missile bay kind of thing, right? So there. Now everyone can calm down. Um, and I also found the door. It's a very unassuming door, and it's right there, up at the top here. Um, now, one thing that is quite curious to me is that I don't really see any kind of main control seat here. Uh, we've got all of these, which it's kind of a cool way to do a terminal type system of, you know, hide your programmable blocks and it looks like they're computers. Um, this has a camera and a Gatling turret, which seems kind of odd if I'm, if I'm being honest, because why do we need a Gatling turret inside the glass here? But, you know, I'm also kind of curious about this guy here, a, bro a broad advanced rotor. That's an interesting mod. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure how this works. It kind of looks like it's some kind of standing control thing, but not too sure how it works. Um, then we've also got hollow ship toggle. Okay. Not seeing that work. Coils. Things are humming, but then not doing anything. So I'm not really sure how that works. We're gonna leave that alone. Um, the weird part though is I had to fly through spectator mode in here to kind of get an idea of where the entrance was and this doesn't really seem to go anywhere so I'm a little confused by by that. I kind of I suppose expected it to have a bit more of an interior but I haven't been able to find any more of an interior. Now, the only thing is, again, I have to preface that this isn't considered a finished build, so there is that aspect of it that could be a contributing factor. Um, let's see, does this work the same way it does? Okay. So, ooh! What? Wait, what? Hold up. That... The gravity inverted there. <gasps> That's cool. So there is no real top and bottom to the ship. They're both kind of top and bottom. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Okay. I'm very confused with the lighting, though. If I turn my headlamps on, it's like everything's piercing. But if I turn it off, there's like no lights. Um, bathroom there. I have a feeling that may be because of one of the mods, because there was something about a, a lighting rework, and uh, we saw in the first build that it made kind of the screens unreadable and stuff, so I feel like there's a mod on here that's adding kind of a crazy uh, glow effect kind of thing. Um, so... It does seem apparent to me that the uh, interior is probably not done yet. Um, I have to admit though, as much of the weaponry and all this stuff that is in here, I really expected there to be a lot more of an interior to it. Um, not really a bad thing or anything, it just kind of surprises me is all. And I'm not really sure, I guess the flight seat is this one out here. Um, because I haven't seen any other way to take over the ship. So we've got fire part one, rail gun, and then something that I can't control because I don't know what it is. I did get a message, I just now realized this, I did get a message when I first loaded up the build that said there was missing blocks. However, I did double check that I had all of the mods listed on the workshop files. So either there was something that didn't need to be there anymore or something got added and it wasn't included in the description and that could be why the three slot is blank at the moment. So just bear that in mind that that could be a fault on my part. Um, so let's just try the fire all button and see, or the first one and see what happens. I'm guessing, ooh, okay. 
What is that one? I really hope that didn't kill anyone's ears. I do have the sneaky sounds on and stuff, so it didn't sound terrible in my ear, but I hope everyone... Wow! So, not only has this thing got all kinds of colors on it, but it's basically got a rainbow cannon. <laughs> and a crazy amount of railguns. I gotta, I gotta fire that again. I apologize for your ears. Plug your ears if you need to. I gotta see that again. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like some kind of psychedelic rainbow blazer. <laughs> it's like, that's awesome. Wow. I mean, obviously it's got to charge up or whatever, but that's pretty nuts. All right. Um, now, like I said, it did recommend to paste it in as a ship, so we can't really test the um, flying ability of the ship or anything like that because it's immovable, but... Uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.